Hey guys, it's Kay, and today we are going to be doing another one of those murder and makeup series. So today we are going to be talking about the Long Island Serial Killer, also known as Lisk, the Gilgo Beach Killer, the Manorville Butcher, or the Craigslist Ripper. They remain an unidentified serial killer, suspected to have murdered between 10 and 16 people over about 20 years. Because the killer remains unidentified, I do have to skip all of the background information that I would normally give right about here. He's said to have disposed of their bodies in areas along the south shore of Long Island, New York. Most of his or her victims were sex workers who advertised themselves on Craigslist. The bodies were found over a period of months around 2010 and 2011. Police investigation started after the disappearance of Shannon Gilbert, a 23-year-old sex worker. She disappeared in May that year after fleeing a client's home and making a 23-minute call to 911. In this call, she would be heard saying, they're trying to kill me. So she very clearly feared for her life. A month after her disappearance, the Suffolk County Police Missing Persons Bureau asked Officer John Malia to search for Shannon with a cadaver dog named Blue. He was a German Shepherd. These two searched for Shannon in the gated beach community she was last seen at, but were unsuccessful in finding anything. December 11, 2010, John Malia and Blue made another attempt to search for Shannon. This time they stayed close to the shoulder of Ocean Parkway due to FBI data implying that dumped bodies are often found close to roads. Even though there was thick vegetation and a light layer of snow, Blue picked up on a scent, which they tracked to a skeleton in a disintegrating burlap bag. The remains were identified as Melissa Bartholomew's. Police later discovered three more bodies searching that scene for evidence. The bodies of four victims were identified as Maureen Brainerd, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. They were found about 500 feet apart. March 2011, partial remains of Jessica Taylor were found along Ocean Parkway as well. In 2003, eight years earlier, Jessica's partial remains had been discovered in Manorville, a town in Suffolk County. April 2011, a month later, police discovered three more bodies, an unidentified female toddler, an unidentified Asian person, and Valerie Mack. A gold necklace and earrings were discovered on the unidentified toddler. Valerie's partial remains had also been found in Manorville in November 2000, much like Jessica Taylor. Two more bodies were found in Nashua County, an unidentified woman whose partial remains have been found on Fire Island in 1996, and an unidentified woman with a tattoo of peaches, who was identified later to be the mother of the unidentified toddler found in Suffolk County. May 9, 2011, police suspected that because of the similarities, Valerie Mack, who at the time was unidentified, and Jessica Taylor may have been murdered by a second different killer. November 29, 2011, the police announced that they believed one person was responsible, for all 10 murders. They also stated that the offender was almost certainly from Long Island. They came up with this theory of one killer from common characteristics between the condition of the remains and forensic evidence related to the bodies they found. So basically they found 10 bodies while on a search for one, Shannon Gilbert, who they were still unsuccessful at finding during this time. In June 2011, Suffolk County Police announced a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest of the, for the murders. Shannon Gilbert's remains were found in Oak Beach in December 2011, a whole 19 months after she disappeared. All of these murders remain unsolved. December 10, 2015, Suffolk County Police Commissioner Tim Sinney announced that the FBI had joined the investigation. So this was about four years after the bodies were discovered. The announcement of FBI involvement came one day after former Police Chief James Burke was indicted for civil rights violations and conspiracy. Burke resigned in October 2015 and was said to have blocked FBI involvement in the case for years. The FBI assisted in the search for victims but was never officially involved in the case. November 2016, Burke was sentenced to 46 months in federal prison for the assault and conspiracy charges. September 12, 2017, Suffolk County Prosecutor Robert Bianca Villa announced that John Bittrell, a carpenter in Manorville, was a suspect in at least one of the murders. He'd been convicted that year of the murders of two sex workers in 1993 and 1994. 
January 16th, 2020, Suffolk County Police Commissioner Geraldine Hart released images of a belt found at the scene with the letters HM or WH, depending on how you look at it, embossed in black leather. The belt was found during the initial search of Ocean Parkway and Gilco Beach. The police believe the belt was handled by the killer, that it did not belong to any of the victims. They announced that new scientific evidence was being used in the investigation and set up gilgonews.com, which is still up, uh, to share news and receive tips regarding the investigation. In June 2019, they decided to use genetic genealogy to identify the unidentified victims and potentially the killer. May 28th, 2020, Jane Doe number 6 was identified as Valerie Mack who also went by Melissa Taylor. Now we're going to discuss the victims. First, the Gilgo Four. Maureen Brainerd Barnes of Norwick, Connecticut, was 25 when she went missing. She was last seen July 9th, 2007. She said she was going to spend the day in New York City and was never seen again. She was a mother of two, worked as a paid escort on Craigslist to pay her mortgage, and had been out of the sex industry for seven months. She returned in order to pay her bills after being given an eviction notice. Her body was found December 2010. Maureen's friend, Sarah Carnes, received a phone call from a man from an unknown number shortly after Maureen disappeared. The man stated that he had just seen Maureen and she was alive and staying at a whorehouse in Queens. He refused to identify himself and would not give her the location of the house. He said that he would call back later with the location, but never did, and never called again. Sarah said the unknown man had no clear New York or Boston accent. At the time of her disappearance, Maureen was working at a Super 8 motel in Manhattan. The night of July 9th, 2007, she called a friend in Connecticut and said she was meeting a client outside the motel. Like many of the victims, Maureen was petite, 4 foot 11 and 105 pounds. She was strangled. Melissa Bartholomew was 24 and from Erie County, New York. She went missing on July 12th, 2009. She was living in the Bronx and working as an escort through Craigslist. The night she went missing, she met with a client, deposited $900, and tried to call an old boyfriend but didn't get through. One week later, for five weeks, her teen sister, Amanda, would get a series of calls that were vulgar, mocking, and insulting. The calls came from a man who may have been the killer using Melissa's phone. The caller asked if Amanda was a whore like her sister and became increasingly disturbing. The caller would eventually tell Amanda that he was going to watch her rot. Police were able to trace some of the calls to Madison Square Garden, Midtown Manhattan, and Massapequa. They were not able to determine who was making the calls, however. Her mother noted that there were a lot of calls from Manorville around the same time that Melissa went missing. This was around the time that John Bitroff was named a suspect and arrested for the two other murders. Melissa was 4 foot 10 and 95 pounds. She was also strangled. Melissa Waterman, who was 22, was from South Portland, Maine. She went missing on June 6, 2010, after placing ads on Craigslist as an escort. The day before, she told her 20-year-old boyfriend that she was going out and would call later. She was staying in a motel in Hapog, New York, 15 miles northeast of Gilgo Beach. She was a mother of one and had been a victim of sex trafficking. She was 5'5 five five and was strangled as well. Amber Lynn Costello was 27 and from West Babylon, New York, a town 10 miles north of Gilgo Beach. She was a prostitute and heroin user. She went missing September 2nd, 2010. She went to meet a stranger who called many times and offered $1,500 for her services. She went to meet him the day that she went missing. Amber was born in Charlotte, raised in Wilmington, North Carolina. She was living in West Babylon, New York at the time of her disappearance. Her family thought she was in a residential drug rehab center, so when she stopped answering her calls and texts, they weren't as worried and didn't report her missing right away. Before moving to West Babylon, Amber lived with her second husband in Clearwater, Florida. She was working as a waitress there. Amber's drug addiction began when she was a teenager. She was sexually assaulted by a neighbor when she was six. She was 4'11 and weighed about 100 pounds. She was also strangled. Now on to the other victims. Jessica Taylor was 20 and living in Manhattan when she disappeared on July 21st, 2003. July 26th, 2003, her naked and dismembered torso, missing its head and hands, was found 45 miles east of Gilgo Beach. The remains were identified by DNA analysis later that year. Taylor's torso was found on top of a pile of scrap wood at the end of a paved access road off Halsey Manor Road 
just north of where it crosses the Long Island Expressway. Plastic sheeting was found under her torso, and a tattoo on her body was mutilated with a sharp instrument. More of her remains were found March 29, 2011 at Gilgo, including her skull, hands, and a forearm. She had worked in Washington, D.C. and Manhattan as a sex worker. Jessica was last seen at the Port Utility Bus Terminal in Manhattan between July 18th and 22nd, 2003. Valerie Mack or Melissa Taylor was 24 and living in Philadelphia, working as an escort when she went missing in 2000. She was about 5 foot and 100 pounds. Her partial remains were found in Manorville on November 19th, 2000 but were not identified until 2020. Her torso was wrapped in garbage bags when it was found and dumped in the woods near the intersection of Halsey Manor Road and Mill Road, adjacent to a set of power lines and a nearby power line access road. Valerie's head, right foot, and hands were found on April 4th, 2011. At first, they were thought to belong to an unidentified victim, Jane Doe number six, but was later found to belong to her. Her right foot was cut off above the ankle, potentially to conceal a tattoo or identifying mark. On May 28, 2020, police identified her as Valerie Mack, last seen by family in spring or summer of 2000 in Port Republic, New Jersey. The bodies of Valerie Mack and Jessica Taylor, both dismembered and disposed in a similar fashion in the same port of Manorville, suggested a link. April 11, 2011, police in Nashua County discovered the dismembered skeletal remains of Peaches, Jane Doe No. 3, in a plastic bag near Jones Beach State Park. DNA analysis later indicated the remains belonged to a woman whose torso was found in Hempstead Lake State Park 14 years earlier. June 28, 1997, the dismembered torso of an unidentified African-American woman was found at Hempstead Lake State Park in Lakeview, New York. The torso was located inside of a green plastic Rubbermaid container dumped next to a road along the west side of the lake. She had a tattoo on her left breast of a heart-shaped peach with a bite out of it and two drips falling from its core. December 2016, Peaches and Jane Doe No. 3 were identified as the same woman. DNA analysis also identified Peaches as the mother of the unidentified toddler. She was wearing similar gold jewelry. Baby Doe, an unidentified toddler, was between 16 and 24 months. She was found April 4, 2011, about 250 feet from where Valerie Mack was found. Her body was wrapped in a blanket and showed no signs of trauma that were visible. The body of a young Asian male who died via blunt force trauma was discovered April 4, 2011 at Gilgo Beach, close to where the Gilgo Four were found. He was found wearing women's clothes, suggesting they may identify as a female. They were between 17 and 23, 5 foot 6, and missing 4 teeth. They may have had a musculoskeletal disorder, which may have affected their gait. Upon discovery, they had been dead for about 5 to 10 years. September 2011, police released a sketch of the victim. April 11, 2011, a human skull and several teeth were found at Tobey Beach. The remains were linked through DNA evidence to a pair of legs found in a garbage bag 15 years earlier, April 20, 1996, on Fire Island. She had a surgical scar on her left leg. December 13, 2011, police announced Shannon Gilbert's remains were found in a marsh about half a mile from where she disappeared. A week earlier, some of her clothing was found in the same area. Shannon was last seen banging on residence doors and screaming for help before running off into the night. She's the one that made the 911 call that we discussed earlier. Her mother believed she was killed by a serial killer, however the police believed that she was not killed by the Long Island serial killer. Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked it, feel free to give a like, subscribe down below so you don't miss new content, and if you have a case or a serial killer that you would like to hear talked about, Feel free to leave that down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.